Hi everyone, this is part of our series of showing you amazing, indisputable proofs of creation. And this is to fulfill uh, what we were told in Revelation 14 verse 6, that the eternal gospel is to fear God and worship Him as Creator. Today is a very unusual episode because it's going to be a fact when you finish this that you will know there is some someone other than us in this universe, and it's got to be the creator of the universe. Okay, so today we're going to study the most amazing structure in space imaginable. It's called the homunculus. It's inside the Great Wall, which is due north of planet Earth. So if you looked above the North Pole and you could see far enough, you will see a void. And inside the void, and that void is huge, huge for many, many parsecs, many, 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 many miles, but in the middle of it is the homunculus, an image of a three-dimensional man. Yes, a three-dimensional man. And where are we going to find this proof? We're going into the void. It says in Job 26, verse 7, he stretches out the north over the void and hangs the earth on nothing. Now, we often think, well, over the void means the like the North Pole, what's underneath it. But what it's actually, we're going to show you, is uh, above the north is a huge void. In the middle of that void is some non-random collection of galaxies, spiral galaxies to be more precise, in the shape of a human form. Not just star points, but every part of that form is shaped of hexagons imagine spiral galaxies forming hexagons so every point of a hexagon that's in three dimensions each of the points is a spiral galaxy which normally is only five percent of the galaxies of the universe but this one it's a hundred percent of every single point in the structure and that forms when it's looked at in the aggregate you step away and you look at it you can't help but notice it it looks like the form of a small man and that's why these the, the uh, astronomers astronomers who found it called it the homunculus and that's the name of this episode the homunculus is the most extraordinary object in the structure in the universe and it's a structure it's not random by any means and it fulfills this prophecy of job 26 7 over the over, the north is stretched out over the void. The void is beyond our North Pole, and it's got this void with this in it. And they just happened to look north. They said, hey, let's start our field studies north. And this is what they found over the void. And just to give you a little preview, if you can see this picture on the bottom there, it's called the Great Wall sometimes. And inside that Great Wall... There's a lot of voidness and empty space, huge, huge billions of years of, of empty space to left and right. But in the middle is the structure of the homunculus. And there is the name homunculus over there to the right. Now, one of the things we need to understand uh, about the universe is uh, these structures in space have to be created or our entire conception of the universe is incorrect. Okay, So the, some of you are going to go, oh, our entire perception of the universe is incorrect. I don't think that's the answer. The answer is, you'll see. Then there is the problem of gravity. This is an article called The Galactic Walls. And, it, and what they say, this necessitates a universe far older than ours because this, nothing in random chance could have created these structures in space because they're just so non-random. So non-random means designed if you didn't know it. But, but you can believe and mythologize that there's, if you had enough time, things could shape into this. I mean, it's never going to happen. You're never going to have all the, you, the galaxies of the universe uh, in this section all disappear, all the 95% of the other galaxies that are non-spiral disappear. And now you only get spiral galaxies and they form into hexagons, each point of a hexagon in, four, in three dimensions. Give me a break. They know that. So they, they just simply they throw out numbers. Oh, it has to be a, qu a quarter of a billion years, 250 billion years, instead of the 15 billion years we're told the Big Bang is. 
just to give us enough time to even imagine it's conceivable this could have happened by accident. So here's the article author saying, uh, and I'll give you his name in a minute. Then there is the problem of gravity. The great walls, this is one of them. The, this homunculus is inside what's called the great wall or sometimes called the Sloan great wall. But I, I, I'm going to call it great wall today, most of today. So the great walls including this homunculus, are far too large and massive to be formed by the mutual gravitational attraction of its member galaxies alone. So in other words, there's nothing inside of the properties of these galaxies that can explain the gravity that could have caused the, these formations. And as they're sitting there today, it makes no sense that they're, they're creating, they're holding shape in hexagons. <laughs> What is forming that? It's not the it's not the gravitational force within these things. They don't have the power to hold themselves together. So what is holding them together in this shape? It's almost like there's a gravitational force way beyond them, like another sun or maybe a creator. So the article goes on. The existence of these great walls, and this again is an example of it, this homunculus and the great wall or the great slum wall, and the filamentary clumping of galactic matter does not support the Bing Bang model, which predict the gal galactic matter should be uniformly distributed. Not only does the Big Bang model predict that, it is that. In other words, we can look at the background, cosmic background radiation and see the universe is completely uniform in its energy. So what is explaining something that's anomalous, that doesn't fit that pattern, is, is not saying that the Big Bang is wrong, it's saying that our conception that there is no intelligent designer in our universe doing something, interrupting our pleasant view that there is not any truth <laughs> to, cre to a creator, you can't, you, this is pushing your su suppositions to the limit. You cannot exist in the universe and, and know these facts and hold on to the idea there is no creator or that you can't know a creator exists. And I, I, I believe a lot of scientists don't know about this fact, these facts. So I'm trying to take these facts that have been forgotten and obscured and pull them back out of the past because they had no answer. How do you have, how do you have hexagonal shapes of galaxies, spiral galaxies? Only 5% of the galaxies in the universe are spiral. And they're all in this structure that way. And all the stars from the region all around it, or as if they were pulled in together to form this structure to look exactly like the little man you see in the picture on the screen. All right, so let's let's keep going. Okay, so he continues. If the universe began with the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago, the awesome size of these large-scale structures is baffling because there's apparently not sufficient time available for such massive objects to form and to become organized in these clusters and wave after wave of these galactic walls. Okay, so he's telling you it's too big, it's too organized, not enough time. So you can either say, oh, this disproves the Big Bang, or you could, if you were a, the the a theological type person, you'd say the only explanation in that finite time, and we know that this universe can't be more than 15.6 15, 15. billion years, for a variety of many other reasons, we know that beginning point. That much we can say for, for, for fact. Then these are only explained by a creator. That's the only explanation because you don't have enough time. You, by own, their own admission, there is not enough time for chance to even get close to approximating anything like this. And it's it's preposterous to, to suggest it. And that's really the truth. And that's why the only solution is to say that we need like uh, 10, 20, you know, more times uh, t time of the universe to, to hopefully explain how these things could happen. And they haven't figured that out. And I want to provide you the author's uh, uh, title, Great Galactic Walls, 100 Billion Years Older Than the Big Bang. So he thinks you need at least 100 billion. I've seen other people say 250 billion. There's no way of knowing how much more because it just doesn't fit anything. And the author's name was Ron, or I guess it's Joseph Ron from Cosmology.com. And um, I just want to give some background here is how did this come to public attention? It first came to public attention through an Omni Magazine article of 1991, Great Wall of the Cosmos. And that's how I got interested in this. Uh, Omni used to be a great science magazine and people got it all, all the time. And I think my uncle had it. And that's that's uh, or I or I saw it. So anyway, it's just one of those things that. Uh, it it was it said this um, in 1991. The article said six years ago, two respected astronomers, this is Geller and Hooker, 
discovered that nearby galaxies fell into a distinct pattern rather than being scattered randomly across. So, right, distinct versus random, you get the idea, created versus non-created. The revelation of cosmic architecture, what does that mean? It's like a building out there in space. It's a structure. It's, it's a true building structure to look like a homunculus. Would answer fundamental questions about the universe's origin. So let's uh, go to the next slide. And uh, then next was the 1991 PBS Astronomers, A Window to Creation, where they, they spent half of the episode focusing on the homunculus of Geller and Hukra. Okay, so the next slide is going to be a portion of the discussion where uh, Margaret Geller is going to be talking about it. And she's, she's very effusive and a very sweet soul, you can just tell. But she's admiring the fact that, uh, you know, it turned out, contrary to our expectations, it was very non-random. So let's listen to what she has to say. Margaret Geller and John Huckra attack the mystery of how galaxies form, not by investigating the background radiation, but by making maps of the galaxies we see today. One is not going to explore the whole universe because it's enormous. In fact, it's really hard even for those who, of us who work on it directly to imagine its size. So what we do is we pick out something we can do to try to start making this map. We pick out something, a small piece, uh, to start the process. And what we've learned in starting that process is that there are patterns. There are things that you can describe. It's not just an uninteresting, random distribution of galaxies. There are striking patterns. And that makes it exciting, and it makes you want to know more. Okay, and in this next clip, the narrator is going to explain that the scientists have discovered now this space and the stars in them and the galaxies in them are not distributed randomly, as you would expect, because the background, background cosmic radiation shows it's a complete random universe. So this is something, some force has interrupted randomness that is completely seen in everything else. What, but when it came to the galaxies, something design them in these shapes to for entertainment for beauty or maybe to speak to us as we would find these things and this is this was put in the most obvious spot to put it the north pole <laughs> you would see a, there's actually a void uh, in space above the north pole it's had perfect sighting to see all these things these maps made by geller and hakra show that contrary to what astronomers had believed galaxies are not distributed randomly Instead, they show complex patterns and structure. The structures that you can see in these, these maps that we have, this, uh, these are circular slices of distributions of the galaxies around us. In both of these maps, we're at the center of the map. Okay. You can see some very dense, sort of finger-like structures that are pointed right at us. This one here happens to be the Virgo cluster. You can also see the large empty regions, the, the voids, uh, almost circular in shape in many of these things, in, which in fact occupy most of the volume of the universe. Most of the universe is not particularly densely filled with galaxies. About 80% or 90% of the universe is fairly empty. The question of galaxy formation has always puzzled astronomers. Now they face a still larger problem trying to explain these enormous patterns. Okay, so now uh, I hope you want to come back. That's episode one, and we're going to study. Uh, this is an article I wrote many years ago, uh, but it's exciting. It's never – nothing's changed about this. Uh, it's just been simply ignored, frankly, because they, they ended up having no solution to this dilemma and this problem. So when that happens, uh, funding dries up. You, you'll, you'll never be able to explain why there are structures in space that look like buildings that were structurally – composed by a creator i mean where are we going to go with that you know we're going to have the religious people all over us so let's just shelve this thing put it off to the corner and and we'll look on other things we'll spend money on other things but this is where christians should be looking this is our proof that there is a creator god in the universe so we'll get to that next time we're going to cover this article and we'll uh, see more of some geller and hukra uh, clips and uh, i pray that you had a good uh, this was edifying, and you will be back for the next episode. Take care. God bless. Ciao.